Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. I recently heard someone suggest that we could use class template argument deduction, otherwise known as CTAD or CTAD, as kind of a version of concepts until we actually get concepts. And so I thought about that for a bit, and it didn't seem quite right to me, so I thought that I would give it a try. and. And well, I want to share with you what I observed. So I'm going to make a quick function that just returns a pair of strings. Now, of course, I need utility and the string header. And actually, I'm going to leave this undefined for the moment. Now I'm going to write this function called get strings here. I'm going to actually call it and just store the value locally. So we're, we're going to see effectively these two values are going to be returned on the stack and uh, we can already see that there's some sort of return value optimization or something coming into play here because uh, well what it is really is we're just giving a name to the thing that was already returned. So in case you didn't already know this, if I were to comment out this part, this code's going to look exactly the same because it still has to generate the code that returns these two things on the stack and calls their destructors as necessary to actually clean up any strings that might have been allocated. So that's 19 instructions here in Compiler Explorer. I remove this comment. It's still going to be 19. There is just no way around this. This is just simply how compilers work. So like I said, we're just giving a name to a thing that was returned. Now this episode, I already know, is going to end up being quite short because I'm going to get to my point very quickly. Now the argument that I saw said, well, we could just do something like const tuple p equals whatever. Now I need the tuple header, tuple, tuple, I don't care what you call it. And I need to properly namespace space this. Now I'm generating 60 instructions. And this is going to compile silently with no warnings on all compilers. And we kind of make it look like, or at least the argument of the person that I, the argument that I, I perceived anyhow, was that we could say, oh, well, clearly this is a tuple-like thing being returned, so I am going to put it in a tuple. But that is not what we actually did here. So I'm going to make this a pair. And this then goes back to 19 instructions. Tuple, again, compiles with no warnings. And it's 60 something. What it actually has to do is capture the string pair that was returned and then call the move constructor, well, not the move constructor, excuse me, the constructor of tuple that takes a pair it looks something like this. Let's go ahead and pull up CVP reference so that I don't get lost in words and instead can show you what I am talking about. So tuple has a lot of constructors. The one that we are specifically concerned with is this one right here. The one that can take an R value reference to a pair of any two types and automatically construct tuple from it. Now this really falls into the category of single parameter constructors that really, really should be explicit. But it's not explicit, so it gives us an implicit conversion. And then if we look at deduction guides, we have a deduction guide that says, if I am past a pair, then I can automatically deduce a tuple, which again, this deduction guide probably shouldn't exist because it allows us to write this silently inefficient code. So this takes a pair, finds the deduction guide, calls that constructor that we were just looking at that expects an R value reference. And so we get the temporary return from get strings being passed into that constructor that we just talked about. The type of tuple is able to be inferred because of the argument deduction guide. And then we get code that 
appears reasonable. We're saying, oh yeah, it's a tuple. I don't care how many items are in it, but is actually writing code that is at least three times less efficient than it needs to be. So something to think about. You really have to think about your types. You have to think about the lifetime of objects. And this is one of those things that makes me go, you know what, maybe we should be in the almost always auto camp, even though I'm not 100% there myself. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it.